Crockett went to college at FSU and then starred in the NFL for many years. And now Henry Crockett is doing some great work here in the local community to help underprivileged kids. And here he is, Henry Crockett. Henry, it is awesome to have you here. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. It is proof that a hurricane and a Seminole can get along. <laughs> you know, I got a lot of hurricane fans. Yeah. Uh, we're still smarting from the beating that you guys gave us, you know, a few short months ago, but you guys whipped everybody last year. So. It goes back and forth. You know, yeah. we have our time. It's been a lot more forth than back of, of late, but. Well, yeah, a lot of problems. So <laughs> now you guys getting through those problems, getting those scholarships back. So yeah. I think yeah. you guys will be all right. Hopefully. All right. Well, uh, it, time for many we'll talk more football later okay because cool. um, I could talk it all day long with Same, yeah. but first let's talk about the Crockett Foundation mm -hmm. uh, what it is why it's so important to you just tell us about it oh it's pretty much my life story um, when I first started out as a kid in Pompano Beach and I lost my father as a senior um, I mean, a man named Dr. Cannell showed up in my life and really just was an inspiration that big that beacon of light for me to show me that I can make it I can do it and he never asked for anything and the only thing he did ask me was whenever I got in position to give back, I gave back and, didn't, and, and don't think about it. And um, so that's how the Crockett Foundation was started in 1997. And that's Danny Cannell's dad? Danny Cannell's dad, yes. Right. That's yeah. how me and Danny became friends. Yeah. My father passed away and Dr. Cannell just started showing up at my track practice and football practice and he became my, my father. So, all right, so with your foundation now, specifically, what are, what are the kinds of things that you're doing? Well, we work with literacy. We work a lot with literacy and we do a lot with health and wellness. Because we believe that if the kid is health and well, health and, and, well, and mm -hmm. his health is there, then he he can focus on his schoolwork better. You know, so. you you played in the NFL, exactly. um, but a lot of kids who grow up wanting to be professional athletes, obviously the odds are really stacked against them, right? Yeah. So kids need a backup plan. They need to be, you know, they need to do well in school. Is that something that that you make sure to impress upon the kids? I kind of like use that as like the carrot I dangle in front of the kids because I know most of the kids, you ask them what they want to be. They want to be the next LeBron, they want to be the next D. Wade or the next Ray Lewis. But I tell them that's one in a million. But what you can be, you can be a doctor, you can be a lawyer, you, know, you can be a scientist, you can be all those things. And at the end of the day, even if, you, even if you were lucky enough to play football for 10 years, when you finish at 35 years old, you're still a young man. So what are you going to do with the rest of your life? So that's why I kind of, you know, always push the kids in the direction that, you know, even that eighth grade, seventh, eighth grade, start having a plan for the future. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's okay to dream big. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, and so that's what we push on the kids. Is that something that you found when you were playing in the NFL that a lot of these guys had no idea what they were going to do when they were done? I figured it out. I had a mentor named Cornelius Bennett. Yeah, of um, course. Sure. And he came to me. He always talked to me about making sure I saved my money. And he also talked to me about living realistically. Like, don't have them open your doors. Open your doors for yourself. You go to the movies, wait in line. You go to <laughs> right, the, the, right. Because when the NFL is over, it's over. No one's going to be letting you to, moving to the front of the line. You have to wait in the movie line. You have to open your own door. So if you're always accustomed to it, you never have to go through it. And believe it or not, that's one of the big transitions that NFL players have. They can't, when that light turns off, yeah. they can't make the transition. Yeah, and it's that. Now, were you one of those guys that didn't wait in lines before Cornelius Bennett talked to you, told you about that, or were you always waiting? You know, I had a different. You know, I wasn't. <laughs> when I left Florida State, I wasn't like that. I, I came out of work done. Yeah. And Peter Bowen. But you were a big deal, man. They was a big deal. So okay. it's if this between being a big deal and them, you know, I was okay. Right. But I never, you know, playing for Coach Bob, we always was like humbled and you know we always were like you know we did everything the right way so he kind of always already instilled that in us you're gonna have highs and lows so always they try to stay in that medium somewhere did did coach bowden ever ever yell and scream at you dad no. gu dad gummin any of that stuff he'll say dad gummin yeah. you know he never like he'll say dad gummin walk away with his paper but he never really you know he never really yelled i mean yeah. I, I defensive coach coach model and you know he, he did all the yelling and cursing, right you know but you knew if you got a call to that office yeah, probably. You were in trouble. Yeah. yeah. All right, so you have this great event, uh, yeah. the second annual Derby Days Belmont Stakes Party. Tell exactly. me about it. Well, I got into horse racing. You know, uh, one of my good friends, Matt Allen, who's on the Orange Bowl committee with me, he took me to the Derby, Kentucky Derby for my first time. Then we was always trying to find ways to, for the foundation to raise money. And some of our board members that went to Florida State, um, Eric Munoz, he said, how about we just do a Derby, a Derby event and we can sell the boxes? So they came to... I mean, all the guys agreed that you know, it would be a great event. But then we said, what if you know, there's an opportunity for a Triple Crown and it really yeah. can be a great event? You know, and it hasn't been done since like 19, 36 years since or 1978. Yeah. So right. 
Um, the last we did it wasn't, you know, I mean, it was our first year doing it, but it was successful. And the foundation raised some pretty good money for the kids. So this year we're so excited because, man, uh, California Chrome has the opportunity to be the first horse to win sure. the Triple Crown. So we're excited yeah. about the event. We think it's going to be an amazing event. And uh, let's go through the particulars. It's um, Tell me if this is right. 5 to 9 p.m. O Lounge and Vibe Nightclub yes. on Los Olas. Yes. Uh, and you're going to have... Celebrity bartenders. Yeah, we're gonna have celebrity bartenders. We got some of the um, dolphins that come out. Um, oh, cool! Elder okay. is coming out. Um, we got some of the old guys: Lewis Oliver, Matt yeah. Moore, Sam Madison, Pat Sertain. Then we got Eddie, Eddie Jones from the Miami Heat. He's coming out. Then my brother's actually down here. You know, he retired 16 years with Oakland Raiders. He's coming. Al Harris played for um, Green Bay Packers. He's coming as well. So we got a good amount of players. Yeah, we're that's... still reaching out to the players. You know, we we'll, uh, we have a lot of favorites that we're calling in. I know. played um, backup second base for a year or two in high school. If mm -hmm. you want me to come, come uh, on show listen, off my Watermate, athletic it's, prowess. It's a free event. You know? <laughs> we invite everybody. We want everybody to come out. It's going to be an outstanding event. We're, we're, yeah. We're looking forward to it. Uh, it's going to be great. And, and like you said, the fact that there could be some history made while you're doing yeah. it is yeah. such a cool added bonus. But at the end of the day, it's for literacy. It's for the kids. Mm -hmm. We're trying to raise money for these kids to, you know, improve in their literacy. 100% of the funds go back to the foundation. We don't have this elaborate uh, front office with all these employees. Right. Everyone is volunteer this time, so no one gets paid. All the money goes to, the, to the foundation. It, it gets back to the kids, and the kids really enjoy it. Is there a website people can go to? Yeah, they can go to crockettfoundation.org, and you'll see the um, brochure on the front page. You can click on it, and you can donate, or you can buy tickets and come out and have a great time. So, again, if people want to help but they can't necessarily go to this event, they can still donate. Still donate. Yeah. Still go to the Crack Foundation page yeah. and go to the donate page and donate. And that's all year long. All year long. Yeah, all for sure. Long. You're never going to turn down money. Never going to turn down money. We need it. <laughs> <laughs> we need the money. So, and like Broward County, we have like one of the highest dropout weeks in the country as far as middle school students go. So it's important that we kind of put an emphasis on that. You know. Uh, all right, about a minute left, so two quick football questions okay, for you. Uh, your, your beloved Seminoles, defending yes. national champions, yeah. will they repeat? I hope they repeat. Okay. Um, we, we we didn't have a good off season, but you know, hopefully the guys get it together. Yeah, you know, it starts at the top, you know, and I think the kids have to understand. Once you do certain things, a lot is expected of you. Like they won a national championship tonight, everyone is expecting them to win it. Last year they wasn't expected to win it, so they kind of rolled on the radar for a long time. Now you're the big dog. Mm -hmm. You got an X on your back. It's different. Uh, last question is the Dolphins. Um, how do you think they're they're going to do this year? What do you think? I think we're going to be about 11 and mm, probably 11 and, 11 and 5? 11 and 5. Really? I think we're going to be I think we'll be pretty good. They had a pretty good draft. We got we drafted another tackle. We bought in Albert from um, yeah. Kansas City. Yeah. We got a good running back Marino. Um, I, I think he's very doable. He, yeah. He's good in the pass pass protection and he's good at the run. So we got that and the linebackers will be pretty good. And listen, if, if a linebacker goes down, they they got you on speed dial. You no, look no, like no, you're no, still no, in no, shape. No, man. no, no, no. <laughs> I just look like that. <laughs> Trust me, I'm not in shape. I couldn't go out there. I mean, I, I think about it sometimes, and I ask myself, I don't know how I did it, but you know, I guess I was a lot younger and a lot tougher. Yeah. Well, you're still a pretty intimidating guy. No, big, big dude. <laughs> but do, doing great stuff for the community. Doing Thank great. you so much for coming out. Thank Good luck so, with the event. Thank you so much. Make sure you be there. All right. All for right. sure. All yeah. Right.